welcome everyone to uh, today's video. We, we're shooting today from our Spokane headquarters and uh, trying to share a little bit of our Spokane world with everyone that we're so proud of. We love being in the, in the inland northwest, which is where we get our name from and where we make our magnesium hydroxide chemistry as well as uh, in other parts of North America as we grow our business. Uh, but this is our home and this is where we got our start. And so we're excited about sharing Spokane with you um, and sharing our experiments with this new product that we developed that we call Alchemag Plus. We're really, really proud of this chemistry and, and we're excited about bringing it to the market. Uh, we have been doing so for the last few months and we thought we should get a, an experiment out to show people why we're so excited. So today we're doing an experiment to compare two different 60% magnesium hydroxide slurry products. Um, as a slurry, uh, one of the challenges, well there's three different main challenges that you have when you're trying to develop a new slurry formula for industry to use. And the first one is, you know, a slurry by definition is a bunch of particles that are, that are, that are in a, a liquid but they would much rather not stay in the liquid, they want to settle out. So slurries always over time will settle. Some slurries are much more stable to settling than others, and we're comparing a, a competitive product here today that's got a very good settling stability quality. Um, it's probably the industry standard in North America. Um, a very high purity, high quality product. And so we're doing a comparison against that product today to show you some of the other differences that are important in uh, magnesium hydroxide. So slurry stability, very important. If it, if it settles like a rock, you're, you're really in trouble and you can't really feed the stuff. Secondly, how pourable is it? How flowable is it? Um, what's its viscosity? If you have it in a storage tank and I want to feed it to a feed point, um, how can I get it to that feed point most effectively? Well, I need to have a product that's going to flow. So flowability, viscosity are another important property of a slurry uh, that we worked very hard on and we're very proud of. Lastly, and at the end of the day, as long as I can get it from the storage tank to your feed point, Mr. Customer, whether that's to, to replace caustic soda use in, uh, for wastewater treatment, uh, replacing a hazardous chemical with a safe one, um, or replacing other odor control additives out in the collection system for, for minimizing corrosion and odor in the collection system. Regardless of what the application is, uh, you need to be able to get it from the storage tank to the feed point, but you also need it to be reactive. So when it gets there, is it gonna actually do its job? So at, at what dose, how much do I need to put into the system to really get an effective treatment you know, so that at the end of the day I'm spending less money rather than more money on something that I have to feed more of. So in a nutshell that's what we're going to take a look at today with our experiment. Uh, John's going to explain to you the details of, our, of what we're going to do uh, with these two different products. So the, uh, the test that we're doing today is a very simple reactivity test. Uh, we've taken 200 mils of uh, store-bought vinegar and we put it in two separate beakers uh, we've got the pH here of the vinegar, which is 2.5, so it's a really nice acid substrate that we can use to uh, show the, uh, the pH boosting uh, capacity of the uh, Alchemag Plus and our uh, competitor's product. And the main thing is we're going to add 6 mils of each uh, magnesium hydroxide and let it run for 30 to 45 minutes, taking the pH every minute to two minutes at the beginning and then kind of around five minute increments as we get further along and from that pH we're going to kind of get a story of the difference in the reactivities between the uh, two products. So let me okay. get the timer ready to go Doug and we can get started. Okay. All right. So the goal of this experiment is not to take it up to a, a really high pH. The goal is just to get the pH up to neutral because that's really the, the primary goal of, of most industrial wastewater or odor control applications. So we're going to see uh, if equal doses of these two 60% products give comparable uh, ultimate reactivity for pH. So here we are just in the very first minute obviously. Um, Magnesium hydroxide is not like caustic soda. You're not going to get an immediate, you know, pH 12 if you overdose. It, it's quite slow to react and, and, and therefore you have to be patient to allow the chemistry time to do its job. So approaching one minute where you are 4.9 on the Alchemag Plus. And over here on the other product. We are sitting at 
4.8. So very comparable. One thing you'll notice is the, the color of the two different products. The competitor's product is actually a synthetic product of magnesium hydroxide made from a, a brine that contains magnesium chloride and they, they capture the magnesium from the magnesium chloride as magnesium hydroxide. So it's highly pure, 98 plus percent pure, uh, and very little other metals, uh, the, you know, transition metals or anything that would be in the product. Therefore, it's as white as can be, which is what magnesium hydroxide in its pure form would be. Our product comes from a mineral ore. So the ore is, uh, is mined up in, uh, in Canada, in the, the northwest of Canada. And... Uh, and it has comparable purity. It's about 97 plus percent pure as magnesium, just like the, the other product. But it has these trace minerals, which can be a really important factor also in the terms of reactivity when you're looking at uh, treating a whole bunch of microorganisms in wastewater treatment. There's a whole uh, slew of, of specialty products that people sell that are actually called micronutrients uh, for that very reason, cobalt, nickel, magnesium, or manganese, um, you know, iron, uh, all these transition metals that can help in the, uh, the activity of different microorganisms in wastewater treatment. So we're not at all ashamed uh, by the fact that we have a, a, a discolored product because the tra transition metals that are in it can actually be quite beneficial in, in the markets that we're selling them into. So now as we are approaching five minutes, let's check pHs. Uh, the Alchemate Plus is 5.9. Go over to the competitor's product. They're sitting at 5.7, 5.8, kind of right at that edge. Okay. Uh, so, check there. As as Doug mentioned earlier, our our product comes from an ore that is mined in uh, the Banff Jasper region of. Alberta and uh, British Columbia. Uh, we that's mined as a magnesium carbonate ore. It starts as a calcination process, uh, and what a calcination process basically is is you add heat to a molecule, and it will drive off the uh, CO2 CO2 molecule from the carbonate, and uh, leave you with a magnesium oxide ore. And as you're driving off that heat, and based off of how long you go through the heat, what the how high that heat t temperature is it d kind of derives on how fast that CO2 is uh, pushed out of the molecule. And as that CO2 molecule is pushed out, it leaves pores behind. And so with controlling the heat and the time, you're able to get a control over the, uh, the, por the porosity and the structure of that molecule. And the more porous a molecule is, the more reactive it will be because it has more spots for the water to react with the magnesium oxide as we add the magnesium oxide powder to uh, water to make magnesium hydroxide. So you have more spots for it to react, it becomes more reactive, and that whole same structure, it, it holds itself as we go into the uh, a magnesium ox hydroxide product, and as we take that magnesium hydroxide product and you go out and you use it in a wastewater application, now you have a magnesium slurry molecule that is kind of structured and the magnesium hydroxides are all kind of the hydroxides are all around the outside of it but you still have that porous uh, ability so uh, as the water reacts it has more surface area for it to react and so that, that means as we approach pH 7 and beyond our uh, Alchemic Plus is still willing to react with the water that there is just because it has a structure that's more open and more receptive to interact with the uh, water molecule, where some of these other products, you may not have a control over that, that, that molecule structure. So you may actually have a, a more dense molecule structure that you only have this, the outside surface area that is exposed to the water that's reacting. And so as a result, as it approaches pH 7, it just kind of stalls out and says, I don't have anything else to give, give, give out. And so, yeah, that's kind of the big difference in uh, reactivity and our ability to uh, have a say over the reactivity of each product. So yeah, let's take a look at pHs here now as okay. we're approaching about P8, or eight minutes. Okay. So the uh, competitor product is sitting at uh, 6.2. So our pH probe goes off. A little water clean. 
And the Alchemig Plus. Stir it, let it settle in there. Is 6.4. Okay. So, seeing a little bit of separation as mm -hmm. we approach 7. So again, as you're approaching a pH of 7, you're getting to the point where there's practically no acid left in the water. Acid being H plus, uh, you know, the definition of pH 7 is uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles of acidity, which is practically immeasurable, uh, an incredibly low amount of acidity. So here we are at pH 6, 2, 6, 4, and still climbing. Um, there's just not a whole lot more acid for a molecule like magnesium hydroxide to neutralize. And unlike caustic soda, magnesium hydroxide being so safe, the reason it's so safe is that it really doesn't have a strong reactivity uh, to, uh, to dissolve uh, when there is no acid to, to dissolve it. Um, so you spill it all over your hands, you don't have any acid on your hands, your hands are neutral, the mag hydroxide just kind of lays there and you clap it off like talcum powder. That's why it's so safe. Um, when you get up to a pH of 7, um, there's a very little, very little free acid left to react with. So the magnesium hydroxide that is still more porous and, and has more surface area available can still further react and even climb above a pH of 7. So we're going to try to see uh, how do these reactivities of these two different mag hydroxide products compare now as we approach and then climb over pH of 7. So now here, let's take a look at the pHs around 15 minutes. Uh, Alchemig Plus is sitting at 6.9, so getting really close to that, let's see it, 7 pH neutral, and let's go over to the competitor's product, Six point seven. okay, we're here at 20 minutes now, uh, where you see that the Alchemig Plus has gone over uh, the pH 7 and we're sitting at 7.2 mm -hmm. so now it's starting to react and just give off its uh, hydroxide but not really reacting with any acid because there's no acid present. Go over to the competitor's product. They're sitting at 6.9. Okay. So seeing a little bit more separation mm -hmm. as we go. So. so as you start to get this pH above 7, as John mentioned, again, the, the acidity is basically gone. Um, how much more will the pH climb? And, and the market in particular that is most interested in how high a certain dose of your mag hydroxide will climb is the odor control market. Uh, in odor control, what you're trying to do with magnesium hydroxide is to hold hydrogen sulfide in solution. So bacteria out in the collection system are generating hydrogen sulfide. Um, if you can take the pH up, you can pluck one of the hydrogens off of hydrogen sulfide. Now you convert it to HS minus. Now it's an anion. Whenever you can make a molecule that's a neutral volatile molecule and convert it into a, a charged anion, then it's going to stay in the water. So now as you, as you high, the higher you can bring that pH, the more you're going to pull more and more of the hydrogen off of H2S, the more HS minus you're going to make. You're going to shift that equilibrium. So HS minus is in solution. You can have all that, the, the sulfide in solution that the bacteria will generate and you don't smell anything because the, the higher the pH, again, you hold it all in solution. There's no gas phase odor, therefore there's no gas phase corrosion. So that's the mechanism of how mega hydroxide works for odor control. Well, if under equal doses of product A and product B, one of them gets to a pH of 7, the other one gets to a pH of 7.5, then obviously you're feeding quite a bit less chemical, um, or I should say under equal dose, you're getting a higher pH, therefore better over odor control. The more you can increase that pH, the more, again, you hold the odor in solution. So this is kind of where we're, we're hoping to show the, the difference as, as we continue with the experiment. Um, of how the Alchemag Plus has the reactivity that continues to climb even in an alkaline environment. Um, now that we're above pH 7, there's more hydroxide than there is acid in the water, and yet the Alchemag Plus continues to release. So here we are at 40 minutes. Alchemag Plus is 7.7. .7.
and the competitors is sitting at 7.1. So it's so it did tick up one more. Did tick up one more mm -hmm. in the last 10 minutes, but while so the Alchemy Plus has been ticking up slowly in that last 10 minutes, so. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty much done with our experiment. I mean, this can go on and on, but uh, uh, you, you've kind of showed the example of what we're trying to achieve here, which is to show again that different magnesium hydroxide products have different qualities. They're not all the same. Um, you can have improved product stability, and that's wonderful. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, being able to feed a product that is going to result in less chemical usage at the end of the day, end of the month, um, is really you know, what you're paying for. So as long as you've got a product that is uh, properly agitated in a well-agitated storage tank, um, and as a company, a uh, president of, of the company that would sell it to you, we wouldn't even sell a product uh, to a customer unless they allow us to work with them to try to optimize their storage and feed system. Because if we just put something into an IBC tote, sell it to you, and now it's up to you to figure out how to feed it, it will likely plug, you'll get upset, everybody loses. Uh, the way we do our business is we're very much involved with, with on-site service, uh, no added charge. What we want to do is make sure you get your system properly set up with proper agitation, proper design of a feed system so that the slurry will be fed reliably, just as reliably as feeding any other chemical uh, without any plugs or anything. Then you can enjoy the benefit of this improved reactivity so that at the end of the day you're using less chemical. So we've, we've run this experiment, we've shown the reactivity difference, we've shown the, the purity, even though they're both 97, 98%, our product contains these minerals that can actually be beneficial in, in microorganism growth for wastewater treatment as well. And, and been able to show that uh, you know, we're really proud of this new Alchemag Plus formula for giving the very best kind of reactivity at the lowest possible dose uh, in the marketplace. So thank you for joining us here in, in wonderful Spokane in our office. Um, you're welcome to come visit us anytime. Uh, we would love to share the inland, inland Northwest with any and all who would love to come and see us. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll do our best to come and see you. <laughs> so thank you very much for, uh, for taking part in this video with John and I and, uh, and for allowing us to share our excitement about our new formulation of, of magnesium hydroxide.